You've been the guy that's done the forensics for all the big mucky mucks from OJ to whatever. So Why from are Kennedy you... assassination to right. Vincent Foster, Clinton. So, Mon uh, Monica. <laughs> so why are you coming here to this lab? Because this is a important area about forensic maritime. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, every police department almost uh, in the country. We have a diving team, uh, underwater recovery. You'd be surprised what they found in the water. Can be an airplane, can be stolen car can be bodies or guns or weapons. So they have to learn how to do an underwater search, how to recover it. And uh, of course, if the body inside the water for a while start decomposed, so each piece of bone will have to make sure properly document and cor uh, correctly preserved. So the laboratory is doing this kind of research and uh, training the graduate student and the police officer detective on this technique. So I heard that's why I'm here. And what will you be teaching today, Dr. Lee? Uh, I'm going to, the first part, going to talk about a general crime scene uh, search recovery. Then I have a bomb. Uh, I initially thought about talk about 10 cases underwater funding bodies or stuff. Of course, in Connecticut, we have a case called Woodchipper murder case. Uh, the husband was an ex-CIA, uh, murdered a wife, uh, putting a uh, commercial woodchipper, grounded the pieces, blew into the river and the water in the lake. So the idea, excuse my ignorance on this, Dr. Lee, but the idea is you find the pieces, you're going to teach the people how to identify who this is. By how to finding... identify, what's the, you know, there are 16 different techniques to identify a human body. Of course, the most uh, recent one is DNA. And uh, how can we extract the DNA from the bone remain, tissue remain? Uh, if a uh, hand decomposed, how can we recover a fingerprint? So those are identified technique, and once made a positive ID, now we have to determine the manner cause of the death. Is this a boat accident, or somebody drunk or fall into the water, or intentionally a homicide? And uh, if it's a homicide, of course, have to find out who is responsible for that. People commit the crime, use glove, who was able to track down. Recover the glove uh, in the garbage can uh, in a rest area. Inside, we can swap for DNA. Ah. So, you actually at the scene find the glove print, at the garbage can, you find uh, the glove, and inside, you find DNA, suspects DNA. Uh -huh. Solve a case, uh, algae. Algae like material. And uh, before, I thought algae not too unique, right? Turn out there are 50,000 species of the algae. Oh. And uh, different pond next to each other, the algae is different. So you identified where the body came from the by pond. the algae yeah. on it? The suspect wash some clothing, have some algae material found on the shirt and linked to the pond, linked to the body. It was solved the case basically, you know. You don't really feel joy or happy. You're not like CSI. You go to a fancy restaurant eating. We're working next case. <coughs> We're lucky to have a hamburger. And uh, usually we feel uh, happy for victims' family. They feel so grateful, so relieved. Finally, uh, like a recently we saw a case and that happened 20 some 20 some years ago in Toledo, Ohio. Sister Margaret Fay was murdered. Uh, Father Robinson last year was charged and uh, well, I'm one of the person responsible solving this case. So the family wrote to me a long letter, really moved. When you read the letter, you say all oh, those day and night, weekend, working. It's kind of a uh, family make you feel uh, they're so happy, you know, because uh, forensic work is long. Yes, you, you can, you, you, even you go home, it's stay with you. Uh, just like Margaret said, is that envelope you're going to bring? I said, yes, have to.
because that's the case I'm going to work on the island. So you usually bring work uh, when you're driving, when you sleep, and uh, it's with you. It's become part of you. So sometimes it's not like a movie. You have a you know drive a fancy car. We drive a lousy car. Like uh, recently, a lot of people say, "Well, you, Dr. Lee, you must be feel so great uh, because that's Bronze Chicken Massacre finally solved." That case happened in 1993. Eight people in this uh, chicken pasta restaurant in Chicago, Oscar called Palatine, were murdered. The body was stuffed in the meat lockers. That case remained unsolved for that many years. And uh, this year we solved it by chicken wings. Because uh, in the garbage can in the restaurant, we recover uh, a chicken meal. But anyway, that case was solved. Only one piece of chicken was eaten. Yeah. We extract the egg from the chicken and uh, put in the data bank. Uh, last year, got a hit. A couple of years ago, Thanksgiving night, uh, I was called to the scene. Outside, snowy, middle of the night. Uh, get to place, the old lady was murdered. Uh, she has no relatives. Live alone. Nobody even cares. We work through the night. We solve the case. And uh, six o'clock, detective went to arrest the suspect. We solved the case at the scene. We found she was stabbed 30 some times and uh, supposed to have a lot of blood. However, the kitchen is pretty clean. Somebody apparently mopped. So we use chemical and uh, laser light sources. We was able to develop some shoe prints. From the shoe print, we was able to track to the sneaker. And uh, from the sneaker, we was able to link to the old lady's uh, nephew.